So today um, I wanted to talk about climate change, wanted to talk about the latest United Nations IPCC report, and also I guess the most important part of all of this is what can the visual effects community do to help, you know? Uh, so, but uh, let's let's get this show up and running. As I said, we're gonna talk for a while. We're gonna have some call-ins. But yeah, I just wanted to stop. Uh, I just wanted to like to stop talking about breakdowns for a moment and start talking about visual effects for a moment and really talk about something that is affecting a lot of you. And I and I really hope that everyone is okay and I hope everyone is safe at the moment. Um, and I really wanted to say this before we start talking about the problems that are happening all over the world, really. Um, please don't think that I'm going to be preachy or am I going to tell people off or tell people what they should do or shouldn't do. That is not the intent of this show at all. I, I want to have a conversation, a positive conversation. I want to have a conversation about this because this is very dear to my heart. I, I've always lived a very sustainable life as much as I can. As much as I can, of course, it's not possible to be perfect. As you all know, I'm a vegetarian for more than 15 years now. Uh, and I try my best to be, you know, sustainable. I try my best to recycle. I try my best to do all these things. And I really just wanted to open a Discord because I do think that we could do something to help. And all the little steps do matter. You know, they're really important. And everyone, if they do a little bit here, a little bit there, we can really drive this back because this is a huge problem at the moment. It's a... It's a huge crisis happening at the moment. Um, and we're all involved, you know, because we only have one Earth. So I really want you guys to be positive. I want to have a, a, an open discussion about what the visual effects industry could do to help, because that's what we are. We are the visual effects industry. And I really want to have an open discussion. It's a, it's a quite difficult topic to speak, but the last thing I need is preaching. And no one needs to preach anyone. No one needs to force anything to anyone. I just want to make sure... We're all going to have a, a nice time today debating this. And this is all about Discord, really. But before we, we do that, <laughs> and someone uh, someone on the chat here is, uh, Ran Deer House is asking me, vegetarian or vegan? I'm a vegetarian. Um, I'm not vegan, no. My wife is practically vegan. I'm not vegan because I have not really found a way of replacing cheese. That is the only thing left in my, my diet, really. I have not found a, um, a good enough thing to replace cheese. That's the only thing left, really. Like I said, there's no perfect solutions here. I, I can't, I, I'm not really ready to be a vegan yet, but I am, I've been a vegetarian for 15 years, even before it was hip or, <laughs> you know, as it is now. But, but anyway, let's, let's, let's move on. It's not about me. It's about you guys. So um, I'm going to start by showing a couple of uh, links and we have a lot to talk about today. So please bear with me. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some stuff, and then I think we have like two or three topics that I would like to have call-ins. You know, um, yeah, you're right, uh, Rand Darehouse. Veg being a vegetarian is already a huge step. You know, it already helps quite a lot to the environment for sure, and uh, that's already like a huge uh, improvement. And and also not just for that, even for my health. You know, because I I've always been obese, and I've always been having a lot of struggles with food, so which is good. So let's start by First of all, I hope everyone is safe, but as you know, uh, at the moment we're really with the crisis, and I know every year we talk about this, but at the moment we have fires ranging in Greece, fires ranging in Italy, uh, fires even ranging on, um, uh, which is really impressive, it's actually raging in Siberia of all places as well. Obviously as well, California as well, uh, South America is also ravaged by fire. At the moment, there's like several countries in the world really ravaged by fire, Portugal as well, Spain as, as well. And this is really something that I know happens every year, but I hope everyone is safe. But this is why I want to start talking more about this. So I'm going to start putting some links on the chat just so you guys can have a look and read. We don't need to read them now, but have a look at this. Uh, I, every link I'm going to put, by the way, it's going to be like from official sources and it's going to be by repetitive, repetible sources as well. So this is a, an article about The Guardian, about the wildfires ranging in Greece, Italy and European Union. Of course, I live in London, so obviously you're going to probably see a more centric European side for me. I do apologize for that, but I, I'm not sure of everything that's happening all over the world, of course. Um, I also wanted to share this one as well here. California, of course, is again with a huge crisis like like always every year unfortunately this is starting to become a story every year um, and unfortunately 
we just have to like watch all these animals suffer and all the houses being destroyed all the people dying and and we we you know we just see it happening and happening and happening so far this is of course the situation in dixie which 400 almost half a million acres have been destroyed already with 370 structures again if anyone is calling from california I really hope you're all safe, and, and I, I really hope that you are safe with your family as well and your friends as well, and I hope you've managed to evacuate. That is, of course, the major, major problem happening all over the world at the moment. Now, of course, the fact, the, the way, the reason I, I made this, um, the, decided to do this, um, this topic today was really because of this report. So this is a, a BBC News uh, article about the IPCC report, which is from the United Nations. And... It is really a catastrophe at the moment. It's red, red alert. It is really, really serious. The, the, the this report, and I'm just gonna give you a couple of. Uh, of course, you can read this this article, and of course, if you want, which I really, really would advise you to do, is you can read the report itself, which I have done some parts. I haven't read, have not read the whole report. But this is the actual full report, um, which you can find here. So just to give you a couple of. A couple of things that are in this report, which I know for a lot of you, this is nothing new. We all knew this was going to happen. We all knew. I mean, I remember being talking about global warming since pff, since I was a teenager, since I was young, since I was 10. Remember, I was 10 years old and the school teacher was talking about global warming even then. This is like the 80s, you know. So we've had plenty of time to discuss and plenty of time to talk about this. But it's a bit difficult to, to get anything done. But... This 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 um, report really showcases how much since the year 1900s we've really grown in terms of temperature. It has several graphics, and I know for a lot of people they think like, oh, two degrees or a degree and a half is not much. But just a couple of key points uh, that I would like to like share with you: uh, global surface temperature was one degree higher in the decade between the year 2011 2020. That means we've grown one degree just on this decade. And that is like like it's it's one degree higher than the entire last century. Just to give you an idea, we're having one more degree in ten years than we had in one century, which is really really uh, horrible. Past five years have been the hottest record since records in 1850. Uh, there's no records behind there, so it's not really it's not really easy to find out what's happening before. Recent rate of the sea level rise is nearly tripled compared to 1901 to 1971. That means that a lot of communities are at risk at the moment and a lot of places are really at risk. Um, you know. Also, human influence is, is likely 90% the main driver of global retreat of glaciers since the 90s and the, 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 the decrease of Arctic Sea uh, as well. Now, this is a huge impact and a huge problem because, of course, as you know, we need, we depend of the ice polar caps to actually, for the planet to work and to have its flow of weather. Not to mention, it's a, it's a catastrophe in terms of, of flooding. It's a catastrophe in terms of the animals and the species that are dying because of that as well. It is virtually certain that hot extremes include heat waves have become more frequent and more intense since the 1950s, while cold events have become less frequent and less severe. If we scroll down through, the, through this article, we even see even worse uh, numbers here. As you can see, they have like this mind-blowing map about what happens if four degrees would go up. As you can see, the hottest places on Earth are the Arctic sections, which are where all the water is, which means it would melt, and which means it would could really rearrange the entire weather systems in the country, in, in the world. Obviously, none of this is a news to anyone. I, th I think we all know this, and we've all knew this was happening. Let me just give you an idea of five future impacts. So in the future, they expect, according to this report, that temperatures will rise, will reach 1.5 degrees above uh, 1850 to 900 levels by 2040. Let me just put that into perspective. That is like 20 years ago from now, you know, like that's 19 years from now. That means we're going to be 1.5 degrees even hotter than we are now in just less than 20 years. That means it's our, on our lifetime because we're all like 30, 20, 30 and 40s. Uh, the Arctic is likely to practically be ice free in September at least once before 2050. That is, means that the entire ice cap will melt at least once. 
2015. That 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 is also very uh, um, very worrying as well. There will be an increase uh, an increasing occurrence of some extreme events unprecedented in the historical record, even at 1.5 degrees. Extreme sea level events that occur once a century in the recent past are projected to occur at least annually for more than half of tidal gauge locations in two, by 2100. So that means that now we're going to have every year what we, we used to have once a hundred years, you know. So this is nothing new. You should all go and check this out. This is all in the internet. You can all read this report. And I know that it seems very bleak and it seems very horrible, but there is definitely things we can do and there's definitely things we can improve in our lives, you know, um, and that's what I want to discuss with all of you. So I have a couple of things that I want to focus my attention because there's so much to talk about, you know. So the first thing I want to talk about is really how this affects how we can basically start solving this problem with our own technology needs because the visual effects industry is a very tech hangry, hungry and very tech savvy industry as well. So that means sustainability in the tech sector as well, which we need to, to strive for. Uh, I want to talk about that. That's topic number one. I also want to talk about our eating habits and also the way that we should actually try to strive for uh, trying to be more sustainable on that front as well, not just on the workplace, but also on our own life and impact of what we eat and how we actually take care of our bodies. And, and then uh, last but not least, I want to talk about uh, transportation, not just like, like flights, but also like buses and planes and like everything in between trains, all those things. So those are the kind of things I want to talk about today. Uh, obviously, we're going to start with computer and technology, which is the, the thing that is more closest to us, to our industry. And I do think that, that we are really it's really up to us to try to solve this by putting some companies into check as well. So um, let me start off by, for, for example, let's start talking about pet technology. We'll talk about the other topics after. So let's start with technology. The first thing that I think that we really need to start focusing on is the right to repair. And at the moment uh, in the UK, fortunately, we are now starting to have more and more right to repair laws. Uh, and I have, there's a really good article on wired.com that you can kind of check. And also there's like this article from the BBC as well. Right to repair will supposedly come uh, through the summer, although it's still not there. Um, I'm gonna put another link. And then a the last link I'm gonna put is more uh, connected with the European Union. But this is the first thing I really wanna talk about, uh, which is the right to repair the way that we can reuse, refurbish, and repair. This is a huge step that would really help us for sustainability. Now, there are a lot of ways we can kind of evolve that. From a personal point of view, for example, we can definitely, you know, use, buy less technology all the time. We could probably be more conscious of our purchases and maybe not buying the latest phone every year, maybe not buying the latest camera every year, maybe not buying the latest computer every year. I try to do that. I buy computers every seven years, you know, and, and I, I kind of try to stick with that. And, and I know seven years is a long time, but it's been working for me for the last few decades. It's been working quite well, actually. Um, and I think that's a really interesting way of approaching this because a lot of the technology that is out there can still survive a lot of more years. And in fact, it could be even be repaired, which is something we're not used to. Uh, so that's kind of like one thing, um, you know, we should kind of like debate. And I know you're right, CG Rockstar, it is a problem of first world country for, for sure. But that is the problem because we are probably the countries that pollute the most. If you look at if you look at the latest the latest report, it clearly shows the United States, Europe, United Kingdom, Japan in the top places of pollution in the top places of, um, of sustainability issues, you know. So that's one thing that I wanted to discuss. The other thing I wanted to discuss as well is that maybe if you if you buy something, maybe if you use something for a few years, don't throw it away. Don't, don't let it be thrown away. Never forget that something that might be garbage for you might be amazing for someone else. So that's the other thing as well. A lot of times I sell things on eBay. As soon as I'm done with something, as soon as I don't need something, you know, imagine a graphic card I don't need anymore, a camera I don't need anymore, or a console I don't need anymore, I then sell it because I know someone else will buy it because someone will have enjoyment by using it. 
And I did. I do notice a lot of times, even on my own street, I see people throwing a throwing a uh, throwing away things that they probably could have sold on eBay. They probably could have sold to someone else. They probably could have gone to a market. They probably could have done something with it. Not to mention they could have done some recycling as well. To the talk of recycling, I have a really interesting video I want to show you. Um, and this is a video I'm going to put the sound so you guys can hear. It's a video I saw on Facebook. This is a video that my wife showed me, Anna showed me. Um, so thank you so much, Anna, for telling me this. So I wanted to show you this. This is happening in Sweden. Um, and it's what they call upcycling. And it's, again, you know, I lived in Sweden for three years. I know Swedish Swedish uh, are always very concerned with the environment. And uh, so let's, let's, let's watch this, this video. Okay, as you can see from there, um, it is possible, and it's actually really interesting that that they've actually made the shop next. The shopping center is next to a recyclable center. I don't know if you know, but Sweden has 100% recycling. And the fact that I'm showing this is because I think all of us, we are all from different countries, and all of us actually have to be a bit better at this because we, we, you know, our countries have different laws in recycling, have different environmental uh, strategies, but we can be the ones starting to kind of like changing our lives and maybe changing our community. I do feel that those kind of things are possible. I really think are more possible than people consider. In the, the topic of, of visual effects, and I'm going to go into the companies in a second because I do think companies have our second part of this conversation. At the moment, I'm talking about personal commitment to recycling and personal commitment to recycle your own computers and maybe buy less computers, maybe be more maybe be more, uh, uh, you know, try to choose more wisely so that you only need to buy it once every seven years or once every five years. It is possible to do those things for sure. And, you know, maybe switch all of your lights when you don't need them. I always switch off all my computers and not just switch the computer. I switch it from the plug. You know, I have like these plugs that have buttons and I can kind of literally switch the standby power as well. If you don't need it, you don't need to have it on at all. And uh, that's also very helpful. Um, and I think there's a lot of power switches that can help you with that. While I'm waiting for other people to come in, I now wanted to kind of like change the conversation a little bit to another side of this, which is we can all make better choices personally in terms of technology. Let's all consider that maybe we don't need all that iPhone, always the latest model. Maybe we don't need the latest graphic card. 
Maybe we don't need the latest camera, you know. Uh, you know, maybe the camera you have is just fine, and maybe you just need an upgrade, maybe you just need more RAM, or maybe you just need more power, but it is also, of course, very important for us to to put, to blow the horn out in social media as well, because I think these companies are not sustainably enough, you know, they, they should have ways of upgrading the graphic cards, they should have more modular methods, they should have less unibodies like they usually have which is really bad for the environment because then you have an entire one object. So so the other thing also that, that I really want to you all to start thinking about is really the dark side of cloud computing. And, you know, I really feel that, that cloud computing has been revolutionizing our industry, but also in one way, it is a, a really, really great way for us to kind of not know what's going on because you really do not know sometimes exactly how these server centers are being uh, tamed on and if they are actually being used with sustainability, if they actually are using solar powers, if they actually use wind power, if they actually are in a country which is colder so that maybe they don't need so much air conditioning. There's a lot of things that we can definitely do and definitely put these companies into check. That's the thing that I really wanted to transmit here today for people to start like making the difficult questions. You know, I think it's up to us to make these questions again. If you look at this article from Green Priest, for example, as well, if you look at this article, you can kind of see that there are ways of making IT greener. Cloud computing and its contribution to climate change. And this is, of course, it's a report that they've done. This is the report. Uh, it's actually a PDF. Uh, you can read. I'll put the link on the description as well. Again, we're not going to read it now. But I just wanted you guys to be aware of it as well. And, of course, the big players, Amazon, Google, Yahoo, you know, I can't believe Yahoo is still here. <laughs> Mac, Flickr, Facebook, Microsoft, and all the others, of course. But there is, of course, a lot of methods of having sustainability if they can at least, on all these server farms and all these kind of cloud computing centers, that we can actually have them sustainable by using renewable energy to actually power them in the first place. And that really has to do with us. You know, if we're going to use render farms, if we're going to use cloud computing, maybe it's time for us to ask the companies about their actual plans for sustainability and actually put them on check. And that also comes back to having the same exact conversation with the visual effects companies as well, which I think are really, really important. All right, I'm going to call you and let's start this conversation. What's up, Hugo? Hey, man, how you doing? Doing all right. Yeah. Thank you so much for calling. Um, yeah, for the, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining to be the first caller of the day today. Uh, so <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, it's up to you, really. Like, I, I know that I know you already, but, you know, maybe a lot of people, maybe people on the chat don't know you. So do you want to introduce yourself and where you're calling and what you do for a living? If you want only. I already know you, yeah, but totally. maybe someone doesn't know you, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm Eric. I'm from New Jersey, but I work for a VFX studio in uh, New York City, Fuse FuseFX. We work in, I work in their New York office as a VFX editor. Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, for those who don't necessarily know the full story of what a vendor side VFX editor is. I think we talked about how we talk about simplifying, uh, you know, how to explain certain uh, jobs. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that. That, that was two weeks ago, I think, wasn't it? Or no, maybe, maybe. I think it was actually just last week. Yeah, it was last um, Yeah, you're right. It was last week. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But VFX editor is simply, I, well, I think I dumbed it down to basically uh, plate and material prep. Yeah, exactly. It was a really good it was a really good explanation. I really enjoyed it. It was really nice. But thank you so much for calling back again. And and I mean, as you know, you know, this is by far the worst thing happening to humankind ever, you know, at the moment. It's actually a global problem, even worse than the global pandemic we just lived through. But for yeah. some reason, for some reason we were very fast to stop for the global pandemic, but we are not really prepared to stop for this, I guess. And that has been always yeah. like a bit of a struggle. It's a really strange, isn't it? If you think about it, like why why can't we consider that this is a, a priority, but we consider that the pandemic was? I guess it's because it's very abstract. Maybe people can't see it right now. You know, I think that might be one of the issues. You know. Yeah, I think it's based on how quick like the pandemic, you know, was to infect and you know, yeah, in some cases kill people. Like just the rate of transmission and rate of everything else was a lot quicker to happen so 
it yeah. came down to the immediate effect exactly as cg rockstar just said the immediate effect yeah you're right you're right i know i know and and we keep seeing these reports and we keep seeing them every year every year we always have these conventions we always have these things and we know it's going to happen it's going to happen we keep hearing this thing it's going to be in 10 years it's going to be in five years the funny thing is that now sky news i don't know if you know if anyone here lives in the uk sky news now has a prime time tv show at six o'clock and at nine o'clock in the evening about climate change which is unprecedented like a, a like a, a really big tv channel in the uk having like a prime time news show about just climate change and they have a timer you know they've put up a timer that says 11 years that's a timer for 1.5 degrees of increase which are what they predict to be like the turning point for all of this and so it's really aggressive the way that sky is now showcasing this which is really cool i really appreciate that they've started doing this this fast few weeks and i hope other countries start doing that unfortunately sky news can only be seen i, I believe in the uk but i hope that it also can be seen in other places but uh, but i just wanted to like mention that at least some stuff is happening but but eric this is your call so what would you <laughs> like to say and how would you like to what do you want to say like what do you want to talk about this yeah i mean the stuff that i'm thinking about is the stuff that i kind of talked about in chat which is definitely in terms of like you know the tech that we use like reducing the amount of upgrades we have yeah. like because there's some people that want just like the lace and grace but i'm like that's not really you know that's not my style at least like i upgrade once it's like more necessary like yeah, yeah I'm when not it's gonna not get, possible like, yeah when well, it's i'm not, not gonna possible. get the latest iphone i'm gonna you know weigh it out for you know i think i listed like two to three years is how yeah. it, the battery works for me yeah like me i basically yeah. go as like the battery needs updating like once it's like in my daily life if it becomes you know uh so bad that i, I can't properly operate or yeah. the phone just breaks then i would upgrade but yeah yeah just use it as long as it works yeah and it's funny that you're saying that because you know i i do the same like my phone is always like the the third or fourth generation ago when when they're launching phones i kind of jump three or four versions usually when i buy a new phone and it's really the battery and again if i could buy the battery and actually easily replace it i would have but they don't really allow me to do that but i i do the same with computers as well like like i i bought the new mac pro just a year and a half ago because my other mac pro the 5.1 the old cheese grater you know the one from 2009 was really like not even supported anymore. I reached the point I couldn't even run DaVinci on it anymore. So I reached the point yeah. that I had to replace. There was no other way. But that machine was 12 years old. So it's time, I guess. But at the time when I bought the new Mac Pro, it was nine years old. So I think I, I at least got nine years out of it, you know, which was yeah. really good. And it, it still works. It's just that I can't upgrade to the latest Mac OS and I can't really run the latest DaVinci, but it would still work if I really made an effort. But I'm now selling it on eBay. I'm going to sell it because I'm sure what doesn't work for me, it will work for someone else. You know, like I'm sure someone else will have a huge use to that machine. And that's always yeah. kind of been the way I work. I always buy something, then I sell it back and buy it and then sell it and try to or give it away to someone that really needs it. But it's a really, 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 uh, really uh, good uh, idea to do that. And isn't it funny, Eric, that on our industry, the visual effects industry, the editing industry, it's all about mm -hmm. the skill, right? And it's all about the creative and it's all about how good we are from a point of view of creation and also point of view of our main basic skill set. And mm -hmm. people sometimes confuse that with the latest technology. They confuse that they can be made of better photographers if they buy the latest camera. They confuse they can be better editors because they have the latest computer or they can be better yeah. 3D artists because they have the latest RTX. That is so further from the truth, you know, because you can definitely still work with older stuff. It's there's no problem with that at all, you know. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I just think about like, yeah, it will be slower, but you can still get the job done. But you know, unfortunately, the way it is in our industry, speed unfortunately becomes everything. So yeah. that's why you know companies go crazy with getting, whether it's the latest tech or not, but just like the fastest tech, the one that yeah. takes up the most energy. Yeah, um, yeah. and we're just using a lot of electric power yeah, and like yeah, that's why yeah. we had the whole you know nft debacle uh yeah. not well, that long ago oh i have the link don't worry that's gonna come up <laughs> <laughs> i have the link yeah that's my next link yeah yeah no i know exactly what you mean but what you see 
that's why I was ha that's why I wanted to have this chat today with everyone because yeah, obviously totally. I can't change the companies and I can't change the industry I can't change the fact that Marvel wants the films laid aside I can't change Disney places like a, a hungry monster of content I can't change that Netflix needs everything now 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 but what we mm -hmm. could change as a group we could start making little questions and we could start trying to be sustainable as much as we can in smaller places maybe Maybe there is a place where if we're staff on a company, maybe we could bring the company to the intention that maybe we could put a, a solar panel on the roof, that maybe we could put a wind farm next to the company. Maybe there are ways that still we could use those computers and still render the hell out of them, but maybe use sustainable ways of, of powering them. You know, I think it's yeah. up to us to do small things. And I, I think people sometimes get very down because they're like, oh, this is impossible. This is impossible. I don't think it's impossible. I think it's more about doing very little things all together because, you know, you know, there's like 50 people right now here. If all of us, all 50 of us, start switching our lights a bit off more and maybe we skip one generation of the phone or if all 50 of us do that, that's a huge already, like, big, big thing already, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's really why I wanted to have this conversation because I think slowly we could definitely you know, in a couple of years, we can definitely get the attention of the companies, especially that now that this is such a hype at the moment. So we should really mm -hmm. get on to the hype train, you know, <laughs> a bit. Yeah. Exactly. One thing I just thought about is uh, we're just saying efficiency in yeah. terms of like the technology. Like, yeah, for sure. Like solar, pa solar panels, uh, you know, is definitely one way to get more, you know, electric power without doing that much damage to the environment. Yeah. And I'm also thinking about how, you know, optimization and efficiencies of like uh mac os now because now we have the m1 chips yeah, which yeah. are taking up less power like they're not as power hungry as like they were they used to be and other pcs of course and just like it seems like you get you know in one way more power for less power yeah, like yeah, yeah. Le or more power for less energy so i wonder if there's a way to you know eventually sustain that for everything not just like mac os but like yeah, you know yeah. A PC's M1, so to say, like yeah. a way yeah. to make things more efficient, so that it's less power hungry, but you get just as efficient power. It's funny that you say that. I just heard the really cool podcast yesterday about that, and it is true. Like they had other reasons as well to do that chip because they wanted to kind of like leave the clutches of AMD and Intel and all the other ones, so that they would have more yeah. control of what they're doing, but. They're also doing the same with graphic cards, you know. For example, I I have a dual graphic card on my Mac Pro. Instead of having it's one slot, but it has two graphic cards on the same PCB, so one mm -hmm. single power can t unit is powering the two piece the two GPUs on the same PCB. So they're really making some really interesting, really strange experiments on that sense with that M M1 chip and with the double GPU in one board and. You know, they're really trying, at least, and I think they can because they're so rich and they're so powerful. They actually have the money to experiment. But I think it's it's also up to us to, you know, it, there are ways, even on PCs, on a render farm, for example, you could replace the, GPU, the CPUs with more efficient CPUs, for example. That is possible. It is definitely possible. Even if you have 20% efficiency on each CPU, that's already, if you look at a farm of a thousand machines, that's like 20%. It's a lot, you know. So that could yeah. really become a huge issue, you know. So, But, you know, like, what else would you like to say as well, Eric? Anything else that comes to mind or anything else that you would like to, to comment or to contribute? I can't think of anything specific. That was the main thing that, like, yeah. I can think about with, in terms of, like, on our side of the industry, of course, like, yeah, yeah. how to, uh, you know, yeah. do better with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool, man. Cool. Well, but, Eric, thank you so much for calling, and, and thank you so much. I really appreciate that you're supporting the channel so much, and second-time caller, you know, like, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's really, really, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for that. Man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Hugo. This is fun. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll see you later, man. Someone on the chat is talking about 3D applications and the uh, uh, 3D applications and, and CG applications. There was something really interesting that I that I saw on Facebook by an artist, uh, a friend of mine called Finn uh, Yeager. He couldn't be here today, but he did send me some really cool, interesting things on Facebook uh, regarding, f he's a flame artist, so he was talking about like save uh, energy efficiency and flame and energy efficiency 
in Autodesk products because a lot of times some of these softwares keep rendering all the time on the background. They're always on, 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 on. And there are ways of fixing it. So he did send me this link, which is really interesting. I'm going to put it on the chat. So this is if anyone actually is running um, um, uh, some of that. And there's also this video here as well, which I will also share on the chat, which is also um, a video trying to explain how you could basically have a reduction of energy use on Autodesk Flame. And again, I guess it's up to us really as well. We should be better at this. We should be telling these software companies that we should definitely have more sustainability on the softwares themselves. And also as, our, as artists, you know, not send everything to the farm. Sometimes we could wait before we send a version. Maybe we don't need to render it so many times. Maybe we can have a few less versions if we are more efficient at the way we work as well. But I really wanted to talk more about that. Um, so someone on the chat was saying that they have an iPhone 5S. Yeah, that's the same I have. I also have the 5S. <laughs> Still the old one as well. It's more than enough for me. I have to charge it all the time, though. But, you know, that's <laughs> this is a fact of life. I couldn't really, like, not talk about the fact that also we have something to say in terms of the companies, the visual effects companies um, as well. I wanted to talk about how we could influence visual effects companies to actually drive this a bit better. So for me, for personally, the biggest really impact that they can do is really to switch the lights off. Because I, a lot of times I see companies with the lights on the whole day, the whole night the lights are on. Computers are always all on all the time as well. And I understand some of them are rendering, but a lot of times they are not. I, I've been on companies where computers are just on. They just leave them on and they're, the, they're on forever and they just stay there for ages and ages and ages. So there's not a lot of good management. So that's one thing that I really think that we could do better for sure. The other thing also that I think we could do better as well is to try to have a conversation with the company, with the visual effects company, about their sustainability plans. I know some companies have a sustainability plan. Maybe the company is planning to do recycling. If the company doesn't have proper recycling inside the company, maybe talk with the management of the company and maybe say that you want to take part of the recycling. Maybe call the console. Maybe call the government and try to have a recyclable plan inside the company so that everything doesn't really just go to waste. Other ways you can do that is also maybe talk with the company, if your staff especially, because if your staff you have a lot more power to talk about and you have more impact. If your staff or even if you're upper management or lower management, maybe try to ask the company if you want if they want to have a sustainable plan. Maybe they could start one. There's grants from the government that they could apply. They can apply to European Union support as well. That they, they can even apply to European Union support to have solar panels, for example. Just having solar panels on the roof could already kind of power some computers. They could already power the lights of the building. Other things they could try to do, I've seen that a lot here in the United, in, in the United Kingdom, they could use rainwater to flush the toilets, for example. They could have a system where the rainwater is gathered and it could be used to flush the toilets instead of just flushing it with regular water because we are going to have a huge crisis of water sooner or later with all these problems. So that's another thing that could be done. Other things we could be done, could be doing as well is maybe having, instead of replacing computers every six years, maybe replace computers every seven years. One year extra could already be enough. Maybe try to upgrade computers with RAM, try to upgrade computers with other graphic cards instead of just replacing the computer. Maybe try to use uh, you know, switch off the monitors. People leave the monitors with a screensaver all the time. You could literally switch off the monitors. There's a lot of things you can do yourself inside the company, but also force other people to do it or even tell them to do it. And you can definitely make the company, you can force the company to have a sustainability plan, especially if the company is small and it doesn't have one. I really think that that small little things like solar panels, rainwater for the flushing of the toilets, wind uh, if you're living in a very windy condition environment even really cool stuff that happens in nordic countries where they use in the winter the cold air of the outside to cool down the server i've been in a company where they basically like I, i've seen companies in sweden where they used the minus 20 outside to bring in minus 20 air to cool down the servers, you know, with filtering, of course, so that they could actually filter the air. That's another way that you could do. There's a lot of things you could definitely do. 
that you can kind of like reorganize a company and make the company more aware of things that uh, that they could do we could get the company to start applying for grants and start developing things maybe if the company has a car it could be an electric car maybe if a company has a car maybe let's replace it with bikes you know there's other ways of doing it as well share transportation for employees that's a really good point that's for sure a really good point Eric is also saying re-optimize older hardware for other tasks. That is also a really good point. Electric use might be also similar. Yeah, that's also a good point. Amount of yeah. So I think there's like mini windmills as well that could be used on the top of the uh, on the top of the of the of the building. I really think that even us, even for example, for me personally, I think that you know if I go to an interview now of a company, I would definitely ask the company about that. I would ask, okay, what is your sustainability plan? Do you have any sustainability? Do you have anything planned? Are you going to do anything? Because that could also help me pick a company. And especially if I'm indecided between a few companies, I would probably go for the company that has a better plan for a better future, you know, instead of just using a plan, just being a company like they usually are. So, and again, I, I, I can't thank you enough for being here, by the way. Like, I really think that this is a really important topic. I feel like this is the most important topic in our lifetime, for sure. Like, more important than anything else, really. And I can't thank you enough for being here. I, I really appreciate that you are, have decided to spend a couple of hours with me debating and talking about these things. And I really appreciate it. And I feel all of us together can probably do better with this and and really maybe make huge steps to the correct place so that we don't you know in reality so don't we all we don't all die and just destroy the planet with us you know because i really think it's it's an important thing so um thank you so much really appreciate it i really appreciate that you guys are all here there's so much discussion happening in the chat i i, I really really appreciate it this is exactly what i wanted this is also happening in in Facebook as well, which is awesome. Like I've noticed that on Facebook, there's a lot of people that couldn't be here today, but they're actually like debating. And while I'm waiting for for Finn, I'm actually going to gonna put them up a little bit so you guys can see what I mean. So um, there's a lot of comments happening on the group, group on, as you can see here on the Nuke group, uh, which I've posted today, uh, posted here the thing, and already, there's already like 17 comments, uh, some of them from Finn, but. You can kind of see that a lot of people here, here are talking about political failure from last year and how the politi politicians are really not helping. You should go, all go and check it out. This is the, the Nuke group on Facebook, a really good group with 13,000 people. But it's, it's really nice that, you know, for example, here, Ian says something that I really, really can relate to because I used to do that at, at the mill all the time. Ian says here, um, personally, I'm guilty of just rendering to the farm and moving on. Uh, coming back to check it, instead of checking before rendering, I am sure that's wasteful. I've been trying to be more conscious about that. I'm really glad Ian is saying this because I've also done this many times in the past where I put a render, don't really check it, and I come back and the render is broken. And I could have just stick around for a few frames to just double check if this was the farm, the, the render. That happened to us even at the mill. We would send something to the farm and, you know, and we would like lose hours and hours of power for nothing. So that's definitely really important. I'm glad that Ian said that. Okay, so Finn is ready here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call him. <laughs> that's a nice limb limb. Hello, hello. Hey man, how are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. So, let, first of all, uh, for those of you, I already know you, but for those of you who don't know you, like, and only if you want to, uh, would you like sure. to share your name, what you do, and where you're calling from? If you don't want to, that is also okay, okay? No, that's fine, that's fine. Um, I'm Finn Jaeger. Uh, I call in from Hamburg, Germany. Cool. And I, I used to work as a CG slash VFX supervisor at a Swedish company called Goodbye Kansas. Oh, yeah. No, uh, very, know it very in, well. <laughs> Yeah, I know that you know it very well. Yeah, Some I have, people might I have, have, I have a lot of students there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of students. Oh yeah, there. right. Because you you teach at I twelve or whatever. That's well, called, I used right? to. They they closed. They closed uh, the school. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that was a, but, that's but yeah, a huge there, bummer. There's yeah, like there's literally dozens of of my students working at that company, <laughs> so and some teachers oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, it's a great company. Yeah, so cool, man. But but yeah, yeah, go, yeah. go for it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, now I work for a much much smaller company here in Hamburg. Um, Mostly doing commercials again and more doing uh, actual engineering work. 
because I'm I'm an engineer, like a hardware engineer by trade. Uh, cool, uh, man. Like a media engineer. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Um, well, I already talked about you because I already posted uh, a couple, like about an hour ago. I talked about the yeah. the logic topic, the the topic that you've posted on Facebook <laughs> about flame, and I've briefly talked about the power thing. But uh, but yeah, you you tell me what you would like to talk about and and how do you think we could kind of like kind of contribute to solving this crisis from our point of view, from the visual effects point of view, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So this, that's been a topic that's been on my sort of mind for like, honestly, only for about two years now or one and a half, like almost since the pandemic. And mainly because the power bill actually hit me and woke me up um, because I was, you know, starting to work from home instead of going to a studio where I didn't care if my machine was running. So I, you know, went home, took my big workstation home as many of us did, uh, and just kept it running for 24 seven, you know, running flame and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, in the end of the year, I got my power bill and I, you know, almost <laughs> fainted from it. Um, and then I started to looking into it, like, you know, got, I got some smart power meters, which I would recommend everyone to get because it's so nice to just have an app to show you like, this is yeah. using 400 Watts, at, you know, currently. And you think like, why, you know, um, and there's some, you know, obviously computers are hardcore, but what I think is even more important is, you know, all the accessories. As you already, because I, I listened in in the car when I was driving, so you already talked about oh, you know, thank screens you so much. being turned on. Thanks so much. Um, and, and, and those were, those are bad, but I was so, like, amazed by how much power my speakers used. Like, I have the, the you know, Rocket 5 that many of, like, the, you know, monitors whatever studio monitors and they use like 50 watts just idling around doing absolutely nothing yeah um which which i find very disturbing to be honest and yeah that that was a wake-up uh, call for me as well a couple of years ago when i because i started working remotely at six six years ago uh yeah. i left the mill and 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 at the mill they already were bl like they did that as well they left monitors on the whole night they left computers on and they, they left all the bloody lights on as well which was really strange as well but I, I hope that doesn't happen anymore. But that was, that was happening six years ago. But I, it started to be, I had that wake up call as well on the first year I was home, you know, with my computers on, I always left them on as well. And I was mm. also shocked by my power. And then I started, I bought like a portable meter that is like a little plug that you plug into things. Uh, not yeah. even talking about the real one that you can have installed on the, on the house as well. But I have, yeah. I have a really small portable one and it's impressive how much things spend. Like my monitor is like 40 watts just standing there. My PlayStation Absolutely. is like 50 watts just by standing there. My, uh, my Blackmagic broadcast monitor is like almost 100 watts of just being on. Wow. It is ridiculous. It's ridiculous the power, because the fan is on and the fan is always like always on. Yeah. And so I've now installed, you know, these bricks that you can like, it's the rack bricks, the rack power bricks. Uh, I know it's not, it's, it's not very technology uh, driven. No, but, but I mean, it has a switch so you can. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that I, makes sense, yeah. yeah. So I have now that on all my, my site, like my entire room has, I think seven of these things. I'm just like quickly showing you one on the screen here. You guys can see it on yeah. the screen here. I have like seven of these on all my sides and I know this they're not smart, they're not controlled by my phone, that's fine. But I do switch things off all the time now and I've actually grouped stuff like when I'm streaming there's a brick just for the streaming and then I switch it off when I'm not streaming and there's a brick yeah. just for the computer and then there's a brick just for my gaming and then there's like my gaming for example all my consoles are completely off of the power now because I've switched off the 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 brick of just the consoles because they don't need to be on. I, I've already, I don't Absolutely. need them to be uploaded. So I've learned to do that. And I know it's a man. I, I know there's more fancy ways to do it. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on iOS. But back then, seven years ago, I just bought these bricks and I'm still using them, you know, and, and I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep using it. Obviously, it's a bit boring. I have to go and uh, connect in and out, but that's <laughs> fine. I don't, I don't mind. And even, even like, like, I'll give an example. The thing I have here on my... This is really small potatoes, but you see this thing, the ATM, uh, uh, the, 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 this is the switcher I use for the stream. This switcher yes. from Blackmagic, the ATM uh, uh, Extreme Pro, the ATM Mini Extreme ISO, doesn't have a switch, doesn't have a power switch. So mm -hmm. I had to go to Amazon and buy a specific cable 
to just have a little switch on the cable so that I can actually switch off this damn thing. Because oh, yeah, yeah, the, I've been soldering stuff for that a specific yeah, reason. Yeah, but I, I don't understand why Blackmagic or even these companies, they can't put a bloody switch on things. I, I, I can't really understand because... Oh, and me neither. It, I, it, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? it? Don't you think it's bizarre? Yeah. It's like, it makes no yeah. sense. It makes no, no sense I, at all. I, I, bought, I, I bought like a huge ISO 38-inch screen, whatever, for home use. And they, like, on their website, they claim they have a power switch on the back so you can turn it off but it's like it's you can't reach it <laughs> like, it's <laughs> it's stupid like why, why why don't you just put a freaking power switch on the front i mean or like you know where you can actually reach it but yeah but you know the, the, then we come to the huge problem of like uh, how vfx companies treat uh you know server farms and i've been doing quite a lot of it stuff and it's actually really hard to uh you know remote manage a huge farm um, and like having it switch off, it's actually much easier to just keep everything running 24 seven, even if it's not used simply because of management, because, mm -hmm. you know, a, a computer, you know, that, that, or let's say like that, if you reboot a render node, you know, it, it could happen that it will not turn back on because of some error. Yeah. Um, so if you turn them off at night or when it's, there's not enough usage, then, you know, it becomes useless and 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 there, there there's where i think there's a huge chance for the vfx companies to sort of maybe get together and build uh cloud render farms uh that 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 can use uh, that can share resources because um you know idling computers are stupid uh you know going to places like google and whatever they're not very optimized to what we want to do with computers no. i think no they're not at all um and you know just imagine the mill and like mpc joining their render farms together to give it more usage like total usage i know this sounds like a big stretch but maybe that's that could be an idea to to you know but share it's not, resources right? it's, the same but, with ride sharing but you see finn yeah. it's not right like it, it's so stupid it's so easy to fix and even you can script things you can do tools for yeah. that none of the files or none of the things would be a security risk none of that would be done like because it's just like another no. Render farm, yeah. I w we were talking about that. I I had the news on from the Guardian about the dark side of cloud computing because people kind of really don't really talk about that. The fact that we now just use cloud, but there's a huge cost on Google, on Amazon servers, and on Dropbox, and all these things have a huge cost. They're not just like on the cloud somewhere that no one really knows what's happening. They're probably something also. They're probably also located in locations where they need more air conditioning. They could be yeah. maybe located in colder areas as well. They could be put, you know, in different places more to the north of the planet instead of be on the south of the planet. There's all sorts of things that these companies, if they all get together, and now is the time to get together. Really, like we we have not a lot of time left. According to the report, we have ten years. So so it's like. Okay, you know, 10 years is, I was at the mill 10 years ago, so it's kind of like, and that feels like it was very short amount of time ago. I was just like, my, my YouTube channel is like six years old. So for me, 10 years is like, shit, man, that's just around the corner. It's going to be like this. It's going to yeah. go real fast and we need that's to do something crazy. about it. And I know we have deadlines. I know we have all that, but there's no point of having deadlines and there's no point of having uh, work if we are all going to die, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, the it's thing. quite funny when you work on like an environmental commercial for like <laughs> Greenpeace or I, I'm you know whatever company, and then you know they give you a harder deadline, so you need to like cloud burst render and stuff. <laughs> um, not saying I've done that for any yeah. specific company. Uh, of course, Obviously, of I can't yeah. say anything. But um, you know, I, I I can imagine those things happen. And uh, but but what I really would would like to know from a VFX perspective is how does a cloud farm that has the economy of scale and also economy of you know cooling and energy efficiency um, versus a farm that a VFX company like the mill runs in their own data centers. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I because I can imagine that, you know, Google has an interest in keeping power prices quite low. Um, so that would mean they they would run very efficient hardware rather than and also because it's it's being shared between 100 people, you know, this one server, it's not just used by, you know, this one new guy that is, you know, pushing his, his uh, ML nodes without GPU on the farm or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know what I'm talking about as a Mac user. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so th th that's something I would be interested in because, I, you know, I, I think local farms from a VFX perspective are 
more of the power killer than cloud computing is. Yeah, no, I know what uh, you mean. I know what you, I know exactly what you mean because because it's they're probably not even sustained in a, pre, in a correct way. They're probably not even powered in the correct way. They're not as advanced as Google would have them or Amazon would have them. But my my problem with cloud, my problem with even render farms, the mill has a bespoke render farm for themselves. Yes, it does. And and yeah. my problem has uh, has always been that I think we need to start accounting companies for it you know like i think it's up to us for the people that are staff to start talking about it you know like bringing it up to management on companies you know if you are a supervisor if you are like a lead on the company you can always bring it into the meeting like okay guys do we have any plan of putting a, a solar panel on the roof or do we have any plan of maybe reducing and replacing the cpus with more efficient cpus do we have any plans to maybe remove the machines that are too power hungry and not giving us benefits from them there's all sorts of things that could be done. It, it could start with us. We could be the force to drive that by convincing our leads, by convincing our supervisors, by convincing the management of the company that then would go to the other management and the other management, and maybe they can work something out. And I think I think that's why I wanted to have this debate today, because I feel I feel we feel sometimes powerless. We do. But we're not that powerless. Like we're not. Like just just think of what's just happened at Blizzard, for example where a lot of mm. people got together and the state is actually suing Blizzard for sexual harassment allegations and things like that. And that all comes from the power of the employees, not really from... It wasn't the company that decided to do it. So I think we do have the power. We, together, if we talk about it together, and even between companies, I, I love that idea, Finn. That's really, like, a, probably the best suggestion I've heard today. <laughs> we should really, like, contact you know i'm already kind of thinking about that. i should probably contact the union here back to or maybe the charity uh, film and tv and maybe see could we contact between the five four you know like mpc the mill ilm uh you know uh, the like all these companies and see if they would be interested on sharing resources if they would be interested on being more effective with the way that they are operating because I, I don't believe that it would reduce their that i don't believe it would reduce the in the in the output and also, no. like I showed from the Facebook group from Ian, we are also guilty of that. How many times do we put tests on the farm just for the sake of it? How many times do we put stuff that we don't even need to put on the farm? Or how many times we don't check our renders before we go? Or how many times we, we just forget about it and like put stupid things just for the kicks of it and that maybe didn't need to be on the farm and, and or just hogging resources the whole time? So I, I think... This needs to be like a, a bigger conversation, of course. This won't be the only time, I'm sure, we'll talk about this on this show, I'm sure. Because this no, is now going to become also, an issue, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, and it, it also goes back to, to clients as well. I mean, yeah. you know, we all know Netflix started requiring 4K, even CG renders. Um, and I, I'm not too sure about how the process of them checking it is, but apparently you now need to actually render everything in UHD. Um, which, you know, before you, you got away with background elements, you render them in HD because of, of yeah. time and whatever. And yeah. I, I bet people are still doing it. But there seems to be something like, yeah, you can't upscale, everything needs to be 4K. Um, you, you know, if you look at the render times for that, maybe that's something... Um, yeah. Yeah, right. Rend, render house says, right, nothing less than 4K. Yeah, they're, they're pretty strict about that. They are, um, yeah. But then, I, but, then, I, but then on their encoding, uh, everything looks like shit. So what's the point? Like, yeah, exactly. I, the, I know that they are future-proofing. I understand that. But future-proofing for what? We have 10 years left. So it's like, like we're, we're future-proofing. What, we're going to watch these videos when we're all dead? We're not. Like, so this is a... It's a more urgent matter to solve now. I don't mind if we can solve this issue. Let's then re-render later. <laughs> you know, it's not a problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you can just you can just do that and say, yeah, in ten years, if we need UHD, whatever, th th that would be something at least for Netflix to be like, well, you know, maybe that was a bit shooting over the target, which I think they that's what they done. Um, I mean, technically, everybody should have like an HDR monitor on the desk running 500 watts or something. I don't oh, know. great! Yeah, with a thousand uh, nits and just be blind by the light. Yes, exactly. I, I know. I, I know what you mean. Like, you're gonna we're gonna have a tan from the monitors. I know. Like, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. This this is becoming uh, proportionally ridiculous. It is like. You saw what, what uh, Digi6 wrote here. Some clients are asking 8K now for future proofing. Like, like what? Yeah, there, there's not even monitors for it. So 
I definitely think that we um, we definitely have a role to play here, you know, because as we get older, we get into positions of supervision, we get into positions of leadership. We do have the power to kind of bring this up into companies. And, and by, I think you are absolutely right, Finn. We can educate your cl our clients about it as well. Our cl clients definitely need to know a bit better of how to solve this because, yeah. man, they are really contributing to a problem that is going to bite them in the ass later on anyway. So, so yeah, I... I I feel yeah, I you feel don't like... need a yogurt commercial in AK. Yeah, it's <laughs> no. just no, there's just no, absolutely no reason to do anything like that. But it's uh... no, no, not at all. Like, yeah. I, yeah, it's it's. I know this conversation is depressing, and I know you know. I was already expecting this conversation to be a difficult conversation. Like you know, I I already see that even by by my stream. You know, like I know, like I'll I normally we normally have a lot of people calling in. We normally have like a hundred people watching, and now we have like maybe fifty people watching. So I know that this is not a priority for people and I know that for f people are busy and people have work and people have and I completely get that but it's really important for everyone on this call and everyone that is listening to actually make it as a small priority at least on certain things they do you know everything matters you know maybe if you're considering com buying a new computer have you really considered that maybe you can upgrade what you have maybe that's one way if you're deciding to like move to a company, have you considered checking if they have any kind of environmental credentials? If you're buying some equipment, have you checked if the company is doing uh, uh, things correctly? There's ways of doing it, I think. There's ways for us to kind of do small steps. Um, and 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 I I'm, am I and I'm actually being very nice with this because we shouldn't be doing small steps. We should be doing huge steps. But I don't think people sw people switch off when you start talking about calamity and when you start talking about really extreme things, they switch off because everyone is so busy with their lives and and we don't really have unfortunately the time for these things. But it's it, I'm just I'm just wanting to have this discussion and I'm sure this is going to happen more and more on my channel now because I feel like. I don't want to be here in 10 years and all of us being like, oh, what do we do now? What do we do now? And we're all like in the water, like it's too late then. And I I, 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 ch I feel that, that our generation can still have a part on this and kind of like solve some of the problems that were created in the last 100 years, which is what happened. Like this is, this is all the culmination of industrial revolution, really. That's what's happening now. We're paying the price for the industrial revolution. Not that the Industrial Revolution revolutionized everything, so it's been very good for us, but we do need to start thinking in a different way. Like, there's no other way. There's no other way. This is really important. Um, and I and I, I know it's a small thing for us to think about, oh, let's switch the monitor or let's render less, or but it's one small thing can really help, I think, you know. So, yeah, but but I, anyway, you, you say yeah. what you have want to say, like... You talk to me, man. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so one more thing I want to say is there's there's a certification program for like good companies which you can guys can look into, which is called bcorporation.co.uk. Uh, and a friend of mine actually switched to the first VFX company that's certified as a B company, okay. um, called Dupe Visual Effects. Du and I oh, don't yeah, know yeah. much du about yeah, that, yeah, yeah. but, yeah. but they, they give company scores on you know how good they're for so the environment. So what was the what was the name of it? Sorry. I don't uh, know. It's called bcorporation.uk. I can send it to you. Yeah, well. send me the link so I can put it on the screen. I didn't know about this. Uh, thank no, you so me much. neither. Before uh, a friend of mine who's very, who's actually, he was my co worker at Goodbye Kansas, and he switched to Dupe just this month. And he's like, you know, he's very, he, he's been, you know, an environmental guy, so to say. Um, and uh, that was that was like one of the main reasons why he switched. Uh, yeah, this one. And then. I see. It has like I'm I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure of how the whole certification works and but I found it very interesting that there is a way for companies to sort of get certified as a as a good you know company. They That's also great. tackle racism and stuff like that. It's That's it's quite great. quite interesting to look at and there's yeah. only I think one VFX company in there right now, which is Dupe. Yeah, um, I've you know, we had a caller the other day as well talking about Dupe having also like sexual harassment uh, uh, training and having all those things as well. So yeah. I'm 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 assuming that company is doing really the right thing, but you see that's that's really up to us, really, you know, because if, for example, if I have a choice, I would pick the company that has a sustainability p uh, plan instead of a, a company that doesn't really care or is just like trying to just get those profit margins and 
So I think it do, it does uh, come to us as well. So thank you so much for sharing that. I I had no idea. Yeah. There's oh, four thousand. No, 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 no. There's four thousand companies here. Can't believe there's only one VFX company. Damn, that's not good. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That is not good at all, is it? Like, let's see here, industry. So I guess if uh, oh, it's probably not even here, visual effects. There's never never visual effects on these kind of things. Uh, <laughs> it's so too small. we're it's, too small. We are, I know, but we are too small. But we are we are impacting the world quite a lot because of our compute oh, power. Yeah. So yes, we are small, that's but but we do affect. And, you know, I was going to talk about that after, uh, you know, we closed the call because we already kind of talked about the right to repair and we talked about recycling and selling things on eBay and those kind of things. But but let's not even talk. Let's let's not even forget about this problem, which is like with cryptocurrency and processing and M and FTs mm. and all those kind of issues as well, which are also something that we need to kind of start thinking about how we're going to do this in a sustainable way as well. So, because I'm not against it, but it's just at the moment, it's just like a, like the Wild West. <laughs> no one really cares. Um, I can't even find it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, there's two. Look, there's two companies. Dupe VFX and actually Araruna Films as well, which is a Brazilian okay. company. So, we have a Brazilian company Ooh. and we have a London company. So, good on them, man. I'm going to now spread the word that Dupe VFX and Araruna Films are the places to go. Since they are certified, but, I, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not 100% sure if that's really just like exactly, the company yeah, is more yeah. than just environment. Yeah. So yeah, they I don't have like a very high environment score. Yeah. Um, but I think that's that's hard to achieve, especially in a, in a place like London, you know, where you have rented property. And yeah. and and th then another thing that 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 I that I'm interested in is like why why in in London are all VFX companies located in Soho? Um, I know. Like I know. that. Does it make sense it, no. to keep those old ass buildings heated? <laughs> no, because I've yeah. been there and it's not you know they're not insulated well. <laughs> it's like no. it's gonna be huge energy wasting. No, no, I know, I know what you mean. And also like like we were gonna talk about that also in terms of trans transportation as well. Like it is yeah. quite hard to get to the center of London. It takes a long time. There's a lot of effort going on there. We don't need to go to the center of the city anymore. I no. think, but. Yeah, that's another conversation. I have no idea. I'm assuming the center of visual effects is there because it started small with a few companies because of mainly Harry Potter and and a couple of films uh, like Lost in Space and and then it kind of grew, 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 and then people just stay there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming it started really tiny. That's probably what happened. I wasn't there, but but it it probably is what happened, you know. So yeah, yeah. no, that's that's what I heard as well. But it's like yeah. you know, if you start a new VFX company, like. Just put it on, I don't know, close to Spe London Especially somewhere. from Wait, film. Wait, like, if you work in commercials, I understand that they have to get the clients all the time in, which is also ridiculous. They shouldn't. It's not an hotel. Sometimes when I was working at the mill, I felt that we had an hotel instead of a company, you know. like it Oh, was... you didn't have baths? We always <laughs> used to have baths in commercial. Yeah. We like, had client like... baths and client <laughs> apartments next door. Yeah, yeah. of course. Like, I, I feel like it's an hotel. Like, they have breakfast, they have food, they have lunch, they have dinner. And I think that's why they want to be there in the center because of marketing companies coming in and clients. But film companies, fuck, man. Fuck that. Like, the, the clients are not oh, even no. there. Like, directors are somewhere else on some other country shooting and there's not no one in there. Like, there's no real need to be in the center of London for sure. And, and yeah. yeah, cool, man. Well, like, anything else you want to add to this conversation, Eric? Or, uh, no, sorry, Finn. No, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're good. Oh, man, thank you All so right. much for joining. And thank you so much for, I'm going to check this out, the Certification B Corporation, check out what they're doing and, and contact them as well and say and check. And thank you so much for, for contributing so much to, the, to, this, to this discussion. Of course. Thank you for having me. Have no a great problem, man. Uh, great talk. All right. Thanks, bye. Man. Bye. Okay, cool. That was great. Uh, thank you so much for so much contribution, Finn, that you gave to the to this uh, chat and also the links you've sent me. Also mention a couple of other things that have to do with our own well-being that we could also be trying to do into our own um, uh, contribution to the environment and to the global, global crisis. And that is something very close to my heart that I wanted to debate as well. And, and again... Please don't think that I'm trying to lecture anyone here, not at all. But I just wanted to like have a, a little short conversation about the fact that, you know, at the moment, unfortunately, at the moment, um, the meat industry is something that is a huge contribution for global warming. And 
just wanted to like talk about a little bit for if you indulge me now i'm happy for anyone to join this conversation i would love for anyone to join but this is the animal based food that tend to have a larger carbon footprint and again not lecturing anyone here to stop eating meat, not doing that at all. I just want anyone, everyone to kind of have an idea that at the moment beef is by far the biggest producer of carbon footprint, uh, followed by lamb, followed by cheese, followed by beef. I'm guilty of this as well. I eat cheese, you know, dark chocolate, coffee, which I drink as well, which I'm guilty as well. Shrimps, palm oil, pork, it keeps going and going and going. And by the time you go down here, you have like nuts and apples and citrus and root vegetables and onions and potatoes. And, and as you can see that much, most of the vegetables are kind of like actually have a very small footprint in terms of production. And this is because of distribution. It's because of the rainforest and the forest they have to bring down to actually uh, uh, have all these all these cows and all these pigs and everything in between and that is why that is happening and i just wanted to kind of like like send you this link because at the moment i feel like anyone that eats meat at the moment which is fine i don't really bl blame you for that i don't eat meat i'm a vegetarian but i really think that it's it's important for you to start thinking about maybe considering maybe once a week start eating other vegetables maybe once a week replace it with a more healthy option maybe once a week try to be vegan or maybe once a week try to be vegetarian because it re could really help you don't need to really become a vegetarian or become a vegan but you can at least contribute in a small way in a small way to this entire thing so the other thing i wanted to like show as well here is this which is really exciting to see. This is an article by The Guardian about all the different companies that are actually now growing meat in labs. Um, this is actually a huge trend right now where they're actually making chicken, they're making pig, they're making beef meat by just cultivating the cells and not actually having the cow itself. Basically what they do, they sample from the, the cow and then they make an artificial beef using the same cells so it tastes exactly the same. There's a lot of companies out there doing that. We have Eat Just, we have uh, Good Meat, we have like, there's a couple of them. You should definitely check out this article. It's really, really interesting. Um, and it's really could become a solution for us to try to reduce the footprint of meat and also of our diet as well. And that's why I wanted to talk briefly about this because it is important for us, especially because our industry, the visual effects industry is such a such a, a, a garbage food food eater you know like we eat garbage food all the time you know so i i wish that we at least would be a bit more conscious about it and maybe consider being vegan or vegetarian for like at least a day or at least a month or at least a couple of a uh, couple of times a year you know obviously you try your best to do what you can um, i try our my best like me and anna my wife and i we opened a youtube channel just for vegan and vegetarian food if you guys want to check it out go and check you know like feel free to check it if you would like to try out some stuff you know we have 21 recipes here they're all mostly vegan some of them are vegetarians but only a few of them and maybe you can try something new and i, I really think it's important for us to consider that graphic that i was showing you and the fact that beef is not not only a bigger larger carbon footprint but look at the numbers if you look for example at pork which is around eight or seven on this chart here in terms of kilos per, per kilo of product but you see if beef is about 60 that's like like 10 times more than anything else so just maybe consider that um that i i, I feel like i feel like we all have to do our part to try to kind of like solve this problem as well. Yeah, Eric is saying I'm not vegan, but I, I make homemade chili waiting your wife, <laughs> watching my wife. So that's great. That's really kind of you, Eric. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Do you want to call in then, uh, Sajal? Call in, man. Go for it. And you don't need to talk about this. We can talk about the previous topic as well. Um, because I only have one last thing that I want to debate and don't worry, you know, we are going to talk more about this topic in the future. I've actually just spoke with Anna just, just a while ago and she really had a really good idea. I think the next time I talk about this topic, I think I should bring an expert into the, to the discussion. I should actually invite 
an expert of this topic and then we can have a call-in show where people can call in but we have someone here that actually really knows a lot about this because obviously i i know a little bit but not much none of us are specialists about this so i really see him i'm gonna see if i can bring in an environmental uh, expert that actually also knows about computing and also knows about cloud computing and farming and render farming so that we can have a more uh, uh, you know a more knowledgeable conversation about it i feel like that would be really cool to have um anyway i'm gonna call you now uh Sajel, and let's have a chat um let's do that and Sajel is the record holder here like he's been now three times on my yep. channel hey man how are you doing <laughs> this is the third time <laughs> I know, I know. You're like, like, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, Eric was twice as well, so that's that's cool. But uh, thank yeah. you so much for 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 calling, man. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, what would you? I'm gonna leave uh, my my uh, Anna's uh, YouTube channel, our YouTube channel with vegan food there, if anyone wants to check it out. Uh, and uh, do you want to talk about the previous topic, or do you want to talk about this topic, like about food and the, those kind of things? The previous one, I really don't know, like how to contribute that in a meaningful way to be honest because uh, i mean we know what needs to be done like use alternative sources of energy and all that uh, and it doesn't matter like if you're in uk like you were mentioning you can reuse uh, rain because it rains there all the time and use windmills yeah. india is hot you can use solar panels uh, you so, say you say uh, it's easy uh, you say it's easy but it's not being done you see like like that's the yeah. issue it's <laughs> not even being done like like i've been on hundreds of buildings and i have only seen one shopping center in britain that actually uses the rain uh, to the flushing of the toilets only one uh, and i've been on a lot of shopping centers here so even us we do it very badly as well <laughs> so I, I think that's really important to giving an well. example like like have you said about i think sweden or something where yeah. they use the outside coal to cool down the servers right yeah exactly so exactly. Uh, there are possibilities if people want to do it the only thing is this technology because it's not widely used and people are so addicted to electricity and fuel uh, i mean mostly petrol and diesel and things like that uh, gasoline basically that uh, and because of companies earning shit ton of money in that businesses, uh, they are not promoting this technology, and hence it's more expensive and harder to access. I, yeah. Like uh, I think uh, in a way Tesla is a great step, right? Like over a period of years, like now finally it's made a huge dent in the industry. That yes, uh, people are moving to electric cars. It's not as clean as people think it is because still that electricity is being generated in a nuclear power plant somewhere but yeah. um, i guess what uh, uh, like uh, minus the initial investment uh, once people start seeing the long term benefits that it could be much more cheaper and much more viable way and uh, as consumers if we change then the companies will change but it has to come as a whole it cannot be like oh i'm going to change because if one person change it doesn't really do oh, it i know i know and th but that's what you, you see but but that's a gel is why I am doing this stream today, you know, and there's 50 yeah. people watching and I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, I'm hoping that maybe these 50 people all talk with another 50 people and another 50 people and another 50 people and someone discusses this and obviously I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to make like a shorter version on YouTube, hoping that have like a couple of hundred views there and then a hundred people watch it and hoping that the debate starts and I, I feel like that's the only thing we can really do the only thing we can do is yeah. like, to make it more visible as possible and to talk it as more often as possible and that is the only way really to change you're right like because then enough people it's like a herd immunity isn't it like enough yes, people exactly. are going to talk about it then maybe we can have a chance yeah. at this you know maybe <laughs> and um air air buzz gt uh I'm butchering his or her name, most likely. Uh, yeah, correct. Like India, I've seen a lot of solar panels for street lights and stuff because uh, it's a hot country. But every country has some sort of a thing where uh, either yeah. wind, water or uh, sun, you know, uh, yeah. those, one of those things is going to be there in abundance and they can yeah. come up with solutions around it. Yeah. Um, anyways, going to the food side of things. Um, I, so I, 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 don't I, want to, I don't want to interrupt you, but before I forget and before it goes away, go away from the chat, just before you go, mm -hmm. uh, CTPOH was asking if you actually need uh, certain elements from, from meat to live and if it's unhealthy not to have uh, meat. Uh, you know, obviously, like I said before, you don't need to stop eating meat. I feel that you can just maybe stop eating so much meat. I don't think we need to eat meat every day, you know, but... But I will say one thing, CTPOH, like I haven't eaten meat in 
17, 16, 17 years now. And I'm pretty healthy. <laughs> like I, I am pretty healthy. I do checkups. I do often, but I do cont I do complement my diet with vitamins, and I have supplements, and I I do eat a lot of protein as well, vegetarian, vegan protein. So there are very easy ways for you to complement what's missing in meat. Uh, it is definitely possible, and there are several. Like London has almost thirty percent of people eating vegetarian. So. There are definitely several countries in the world as well. India has a huge vegetarian population as well. It's definitely possible to live a healthy life without meat. It is. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be harmful for you in any way. And if you want, maybe start by doing it once a week. Maybe once a week. That's already a good step, you know, like because uh, at the end of the year, that will be 54 times that you'll do it, you know, so which is which is great. So I didn't mean to like um, didn't mean to like interrupt you, Sajal, but I just wanted to say this to him before no. he, before he goes away, before it goes away from the chat, and then I forget. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. Um, I mean, uh, to add to that, CDPOH, uh, a lot of meat eaters worry that uh, oh, I'm gonna have less protein. That's the common thing I've heard across the board. Yeah, uh, there's something called soya beans, right? Yeah, and it has more protein than any meat you can eat in the world. So, uh, and it's a vegetarian plant-based thing so yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely i, I, I eat, eat that, that a lot alternators yeah. you know yeah, yeah. There, there, there's a lot and there's also processed food as well and and also let's not forget about the article i put up like you you might not even need to stop eating meat the law lo the, the lab grown meat is actually an excellent alternative because you can have meat which is real meat because this is done on a lab but it is real meat what they do is they cultivate sheets of cells to make a meat so it is real meat, it has a real protein, it has everything, but you just don't kill the cows and you just don't have to to deflorest, deflorest the world to have the cows and to have so much transportation of meat and you don't have to have all that big industry that is around the meat, you know, that's... So it might even be possible for you to, to keep eating it, you know, as well, so... Yeah. I mean, um, I had seen this documentary... About a year or two back, uh, my friend proposed, like, uh, why don't you try becoming a vegan? It's much more better. Uh, I forgot the YouTuber's name, uh, but uh, he does a lot of uh, things on vegan. And uh, I don't know if I can talk about that on stream, uh, but he was talking about things that come in milk due to uh, cows. They're, uh, like, cows or buffaloes or sheep or whatever, they're, they're, in a way, are raped, right, With, by those machines, if you think about it. Yeah, and not to mention bodily fluids and all that. So when I initially saw it, I was like, hmm, uh, "That does make sense. Like, why should we screw up or kill something to uh, please my taste buds?" And uh, trust me, this is coming from a person who loves chicken, right? Yeah, no, that's uh, there, but, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I eat, I, I love yeah. cheese. I love cheese, and cheese is on this chart. Cheese is actually the third place oh, on yeah. the chart. So, you know, we're yeah. all guilty of that. We're all guilty of these things, and yeah. we we just. Oh yeah, it's difficult for us, you know. Like I understand all of that, so absolutely. Yep, uh, cheese and pizzas, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, can't I mean, there's no. So, uh, I'll I'll tell you, like I told every everyone here, there's no judgment here, and and we're all just chatting and just talking of how we can like maybe improve, maybe a couple of days a week, or yep. maybe that's the only way we can do really. But uh, I reduced eating pizzas for sure. Like I uh, like that's my favorite thing, uh, anyways. Uh, yeah. But uh, mostly I've like. My wife keeps on telling me because, you know, uh, my wife is like 100% vegetarian and she keeps on saying like when we go to a restaurant, like, why don't you have chicken? But then I kind of feel bad. Like one thing, I'm not going to be able to finish that by myself anyways. So it goes to waste. And that's what really got me started thinking that something died and I'm throwing it in dustbin. Yeah. You know? Uh, or maybe someone can't afford to eat that stuff. Uh, let's uh, okay. Maybe if I'm insensitive towards life, then I can think of me, uh, like someone poor could have eaten that rather than me wasting it. So slowly and gradually, like I don't eat as much meat anymore. Like I think last time I would have had chicken or something would have been seven or eight months or more. Maybe I guess. Yeah. So that's good. Man. Um, that's good. That's good. And I think yeah. I think that. The unfortunately, unfortunately, I think also there's a lot of problems with the the preaching nature of vegans and vegetarians. That is yeah. one of the issue. You yeah. know, I've never been like that, but I I feel it's like like blender group. Yeah, yeah, no, but it is. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Like I've been on a lot of groups in Facebook, which I have to leave the group, but I because I can't stand them. <clears throat> you know, when when they're like like basically, uh, you know, like 
telling people off because they are vegetarians and they shouldn't be there that vegetarians are worse than 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 meat eaters and this and that that is not really the discord people should all be nice to each other and people yeah. should all help each other and i feel like you know i don't judge anyone you know because i i can't be a hypocrite you know i eat cheese i can't be an hypocrite no one should be an hypocrite yeah. we all none of us can have a perfect life none of us none of us yeah. like we all yeah. have computers it's we all not have possible phones. with today's day and age no it's there not possible this, otherwise uh, otherwise you're not going to be able to sustain you're going to die you're going to like it's not possible for you to have yeah. a perfect life and fortunately because um, we drive through money and that's how capitalism works that there's no way we can solve that but we can solve it in small things, small ways, you know, so, I think. So there is this female in um, US. Um, I've seen her YouTube video interview. Uh, she's been doing this for years and showing sustainable ways to live. Like she avoids everything, right? Plastic bags and everything, like anything which cannot be recycled. She keeps it in a little pouch, uh, in little jars in her house. And uh, it's it's quite a collection over the years, but it's not like a dump yard, right? Uh, and she would not use anything which is not environmentally sustainable or recycle and uh, try to avoid everything. Uh, I forgot her name. Uh, she had quite blown up uh, on internet and she has a web page where she shows alternatives to a lot of things from power stuff to uh, like for handbags instead of plastic bags, just carry a black bag made of cloth. One, it will last for a longer period of time and you're not dumbing plastic. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, if like a lot of, uh, the main thing comes to this, like, like herd mentality, like the more people start adopting it, like one thing I've seen is if you push someone to do something, they're most likely not to do it, uh, yeah. as a human need, exactly. you know, because, yeah. uh, you'll get repelled by that thing. Like, oh, why are they like, I'm not a kid anymore. Or it could be anything in their heads. Right. Yeah. But. If you talk nicely and just suggest someone and say, hey, look into it, maybe it makes sense. And yeah. uh, uh, like in my case, after two years of seeing that vegan video, I thought, look, OK, I, I don't want I want to avoid eating non-veg as much uh, as possible. But yes, uh, I have my vices as well. I can't go away from cheese, for example. It's very difficult. You know, it's very difficult. But, yeah. but you know. And, and you know, this is already being a long conversation. Again, like I said, yep. I, I feel like we're going to have this conversation more often. I'm definitely going to bring this up and bring and I'm going to bring a specialist. I think I should bring like a, a specialist in this environment. I think we've talked enough. <laughs> I really appreciate everyone's time here. Really appreciate everyone listening in to this thing, um, you know. I really recommend you all to go and read the uh, read the, the the report from the United uh, Nations as well. So I put all the links there on the chat. Please go and research this. It's really important for all of us to do it. So um, I really want to thank everyone to have an open mind and debate this today. We had 50 people at some point. It was great. I'm really happy that all of you joined and talked about this in such a high level. And I really, really th want to thank Finn and Eric and Sajal for the contributions they made, both from links, but also like by calling in. It was great if you guys called in. It was great. So let's do. Um, so I can't thank you enough, and I can't thank you for all your support. It's been fantastic to see the love I'm getting and the care I'm living on on both YouTube and on Twitch as well. Uh, I got some loonies as well. I got the other day people telling me not to be political that I'm gonna be uh, that I shouldn't do this. But I'm not going to stop doing this. I don't think this is a political matter. I think this is a humanity matter. You know, I really think that uh, in the bottom of my heart. So.